the Moscow uh, Urban Forum. I'm Mikhail Homich. Uh, I'm a professor and uh, development director of the business incubator of the Faculty of Economics, Lomonosov Moscow State University. Today we have a practical session. We have people from the business and uh, we have people who facilitate the development of our of the business. We have Alexander Svinin, who is the founder of the uh, Smart Start company, who uh, has done a lot for the employment of uh, young Muscovites. We have Shahar Weiser, a businessman, uh, CEO of the Get Taxi company. I, I think many of you have uh, used uh, this company uh, in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, in Tel Aviv, in New York, in London. Yet Taxi has attracted uh, 42 million uh, dollars in financing, and uh, Get Taxi one of was one of the uh, top uh, growing startup uh, st startups in the world. Suren Vadenian, uh, vice president of the Moscow Chamber of Commerce, Alexei Komisarov, Moscow government minister, uh, head of the, the Department of Science, uh, and uh, now we have Mike Emerich. New Economy Research Center, which is in charge of eco economics and po politics uh, research center. So we'll have a uh, perspective from abroad. We have uh, Denis Kam Kaminsky. It's uh, the Future Today company, which uh, is uh, active in graduate recruitment. He's also a professor at Moscow State University. Vladimir Efimov, Minister of the Moscow government head of the Department for Property at, and then Lawrence Wright, founder of the startup Skolkovo Academy Innovative Program, which uh, uh, which gives uh, rise to, to a number of startups in Moscow every year. So our discussion will revolve around uh, specific topics. No normally, we talk about general questions, general issues. Uh, everyone nods, uh, uh, in agreeing that it's good, it's correct, and uh, we'll try not to do this today. We'll try to be more specific today, and if the solutions do not fit at first glance, we'll be honest on that. We would like to have a certain list of, uh, uh, of uh, solutions for Moscow businesses as a result of our discussion. Starting this conversation, I would say that uh, at the uh, Moscow State University incubator, we have uh, f uh, collected certain businesses, so we provide funding for them, we support them, and we are not happy uh, with this level of support. All the startups want to get lots of money because they have participated in the different programs in Moscow. They feel that they are great. They won a number of competition and. Uh, uh, one and a half or two billion dollars, million dollars is n not a big amount for them. But we are not happy with, with that. The amount of support which Moscow, which businessmen in Moscow enjoy uh, are quite tremendous, quite huge. You can enter our website, the Department for Entrepreneurship. The opportunities are quite high compared to different regions. And after this introduction, everything is quite uh, optimistic. Let's uh, go over to the things which can be improved in terms of entrepreneurship. Uh, you, uh, uh, the first speaker will be, of course, Alexei Komisarov, the minister of Moscow government. So what's going on in the sphere of business, in the sphere of entrepreneurship, and what's, uh, in, what's uh, expecting us? Uh, good morning, dear friends. There are lots of uh, people in the audience who are familiar to me. I think it's good, but uh, because it's uh, it's a lot of fun having you here. On the other hand, I would like to s listen to more experience from other countries to uh, to compare it with Moscow. But I hope that we'll have an active participation from our colleagues at the table and someone from the audience, so we. We agreed uh, to have this session as open as possible, not uh, predefined, not pre not designed in advance. We would like to openly 
talk about uh, the problems which exist and probably find certain new solutions. I would like to start with uh, the fact that I don't doubt that entrepreneurship in Moscow should develop and the level which exists at present, the contribution into the city's economy of 25% is not sufficient, is, is too small. And uh, I hope that the quality and the amount of entrepreneurship will grow. Uh, we have to find out what we should do to, to, to increase that, to enhance that process. So I have, I'm uh, in favor of um, dividing su su business support into two blocks. The first block will be in the innovative companies, and the second block will be traditional business. Why should we draw a line between these two parts? Because the, these uh, uh, aspects need different uh, measures of support. Innovative enterprises grow very fast, and uh, they create lots of jobs, and they boost the economy in a very powerful way, unlike traditional companies, which uh, create uh, like one, two, three uh, new uh, job uh, jobs uh, and in my opinion everything which pertains to the innovative business support is taking place at the world level of course we have something to improve on but in general the discussions are quite numerous and we have a general understanding of what we should do as for traditional business we should support as well and we can say that there is a crisis of the support system for business in the country and in the city despite uh, in spite of what michael has said uh, uh, it uh, a lot is being done but a these support measures do not influence uh, the situation in business in, sub in a substantial way I'll uh, uh, I'll talk about the things which we would like to concentrate upon the next year. We should uh, uh, make uh, the services for the business uh, electronically available. This will be the first stage. Uh, in Moscow, there are multifunctional centers for our inhabitants. We have to do the, to make the same centers uh, for businesses to. Uh, it's like a single window approach uh, so that the business could come to, a, to one office and get a, a maximum number of services they need and to minimize the contact uh, with the officials, to minimize the red tape. Moscow is moving towards the open data platform. We want to uh, adjust it to the needs of the business so that the business knows what potential they have in different parts of the city. They need to to have information on the number of inhabitants, and number of kids, number of uh, families, households, cars, any other statistical data. And at the same time, about the number of existing services uh, available, restaurants, cafes, so that they wouldn't uh, have to spend lots of money on marketing research, so that they wouldn't have to choose where to start their business and will keep uh, supporting innovative business. We have a plan to support, um, to al allocate additional subsidies for uh, the, uh, for licensing, for international licensing, because Moscow, of course, is a city, is, is a uh, research intensive city, and we think that this advantage of Moscow should not, uh, should not be lost. I will not focus on other ways of supporting business because everyone knows that there are consultations, educational programs, subsidies. Um, so let's uh, go. Let's move on to particular questions and remarks, and then we'll have a discussion. Thank you. It's a good start. You have uh, particular plans, specific measures. What could be added? The first idea will come from Alexander Sween, uh, member of the. Uh, uh, Union of Enterprises Opora uh, Rossi. Dear colleagues, everyone uh, knows that 
every um, everything uh, is being done quite successfully and the situation is uh, being monitored all across the country and in 15 uh, regions and provinces of Russia I have uh, talked to local governments not only in the major cities but uh, in smaller townships as well Moscow is not just a uh, capital it's a entrepreneurial hub it uh, supports and uh, businesses it is not only about uh, money, about more money being uh, located in Moscow. It's just systemic work with which our government is constantly performing. What I would like to add and uh, we, uh, what problems we have, I will focus more on not on innovative business because everything is fine with it. We have uh, 150 venture funds and uh, uh, most of the startups uh, are located in Moscow, so that's where we have least problems. The problems are with traditional business, uh, smaller and medium business. 90% of our members are traditional types of business. The first message we have, we would like to articulate, is um, retail trade. We are talking a lot about this about uh, uh, por portable uh, kiosks and it's sometimes we cannot define their legal status of uh, such booths because uh, there is a lack of legislation there are uh, legal gaps if we talk ab about Ukraine our uh, nearest neighbors in, uh, next uh, there are tens of uh, booths next to every uh, metro station subway station uh, it such uh, a small enterprises such small uh, booths would be a good start for young entrepreneurs and there are lots of measures around the city uh, holidays feasts parks festivals uh, we could invite uh, our young entrepreneurs there openly and uh, so what's the solution Moscow in Moscow uh, portable booths should be allowed by a law, a law should be introduced in Moscow, which which should allow that, and that's the collision. It is not allowed, but it is not forbidden. It is a legal collision. We had a case when a young entrepreneur did uh, drive his car to the Department of Trade, and uh, the, the head of our department did uh, purchase that coffee, and he drove. Uh, one mile uh, from that from that uh, place and a policeman did uh, did uh, did ask for his documents i would like to ask mr vadanyan who is uh, who has uh, his own uh, perspective as alexei has said portable trade is not forbidden it's not banned and the collision of law so everything which is not forbidden should be allowed although there are different approaches uh, which are used by s by the monitoring bodies it's not a question to alexei because it is not uh, within the uh, competence of the department it's uh, about uh, the chamber of trade and commerce of moscow we need to to collect initiative from businesses and uh, try to raise this at the level of the Moscow uh, local parliament, city, city municipal parliament, and they are not uh, very eager to enter in that to enter that discussion. And lawyers should uh, tackle that problem, that problem, and uh, they should uh, try to consolidate uh, the opinions of the business in this situation. We are trying to do this in the chamber. We are trying to elaborate on. Uh, a unified approach with the businesses it's a key topic when the authorities uh, will when the authorities uh, get a certain consolidated opinion not just number of approaches but a legally defined legally correct uh, uh, opinion nevertheless let's let's just uh, put it down oh, we should consolidate this opinion we should have uh, lawyers uh, review that, re revise that, and let's move on to our next topic. 
to next uh, 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 our next topic. Let's uh, give the floor to Sh to Mr. Shahar Weiser, who has uh, s s launched a very successful taxi service. Shahar, uh, I welcome you. In fact, we have an interesting situation where the company, which uh, drives millions of people around the world, and we have a perspective from the side because we can work in London, Israel, in Russia, and in London. We have something to compare with, like McDonald's is a parameter of economy to be compared in different countries. And uh, that's what we have uh, as well, and what that's what we can share. Uh, we re Quite recently, we did not believe that uh, we could uh, launch that service in Moscow. Uh, we are the mir miraculous service which uh, has come to Moscow, and we were eager to do four things. First of all, we are in, the, in public transportation. We make it legal and transparent. People who work with us pay taxes, millions of dollars in taxes. We uh, create a number, uh, lots of uh, working places. We uh, promote the use of public transport, which is taxi. Uh, and uh, people, uh, so traffic jams get reduced because people do not use their own transport. Taxi is public transport. So we motivate the infrastructure, we op optimize the traffic jams. We do things in practice which are useful for every city. And uh, these ambitious goals are faced by every capital in the world. And the difference is that our capital comes to the city and uh, uses its own money to promote these goals. But our, uh, uh, our opinion is that many cities view these initiative, initiatives differently. Uh, taxes, safety, security, tourism, availability. But in London, we met all the mayors of uh, the capitals. But it's always been an active communication. People from the municipal authorities came to us, and uh, they were delighted by, by us. But uh, because we were doing that in practice. We've been in Russia for two years, and millions of dollars uh, are paid in taxes, are uh, paid for the promotion of taxi. So we uh, also are active in television business. And in New York, Mr. Bloomberg is active in talking to companies. We're not asking for budgetary f uh, f funding. We just uh, work hard. And it looks like a business, but it is a very uh, difficult business. Bloomberg. Uh, and the mayor of Tel Aviv are eager to help us. And Bo uh, the Boris, the mayor of London, uh, made us the official uh, taxi company of the Olympic Games. And uh, I heard that this certain mayor did uh, use the taxi. The Tel Aviv mayor is fond of our company. He uses Get Taxi, and he does promote the company publicly. And uh, he even met the Mr. Bloomberg in the office of Get Taxi. We don't have any uh, overlap in funding. We share certain values with the city authorities, which are fam um, familiar to, which are close to the city. We uh, would like to know what the city can do to, prom to help the companies. We talked about traditional companies and innovative companies. We use innovations to do most traditional business which can be. It's transportation. Our shareholders were against uh, entering the Russian market because they thought we were insane. Now, uh, this is behind us, and we don't need money. We are investing our private capital. What can be done? Uh, Alexei? OK, let me answer the first question very briefly, and then I'll comment on the second remark. As for uh, the mobile booths for trading, my colleague is not here from the Department of uh, Services and Trade. These uh, activities are quite legal, quite uh, uh, understandable. The question is 
um, what time was spent to do it because we had some businessmen and they didn't have all the documents prepared and registered in a proper way so they probably suffered more than the others however the mayor understands that we also understand that we really need uh, this free of shop trade but uh, we need to set up a civilized and clear rules of the game as for the mobile cafeterias and cafes I personally visited together with my colleagues from the Department of Services when met the mayor Mr. Sabanin and he said he was in for these services but these mobile cafes should be civilized it shouldn't be her old timers in a bad shape sometimes you can see old trolley buses with the flat tires sitting standing somewhere at this street and disturbing the view so we are ho hope we are going the in the right direction as for the what Shahar said Moscow differs from the other cities he mentioned in a way because we really had a really change in a tax business probably no other city in the world had really faced such a significant change in a tax business Moscow faced within the last five years the cities you mentioned were more active in cooperating with you because they really understood that they were not able to do these changes by themselves in Moscow the first task was to legal legalize the tax business and to bring this business into a legal frame nevertheless it's absolutely clear and I can say what we are doing here for this area and probably for the whole business because it gives additional opportunities and since this end of this year we will publish open inquiries from the colleagues from different departments what tasks they need to be to resolve this could be a need for transportation one of the first inquiries is deals with the decrease of noise in the city we also have issues with the pedestrian safety that is not an order for the city to construct more subways or any protective shells against the noise there's a question to everyone how to resolve this or that problem the city is facing now and it could in a taxi issue is also important it is also crucial for your business allow me to add Shahar, this is a topic of great interest. However, uh, this conversation between the business and the city uh, is being carried out at the platform of the Moscow Chamber of Commerce. We also have representatives from the uh, this Department of Transport and from the business, and we discuss everything uh, very intensively, and we also search for common and joint decision sometimes we also can even generate new acts I would like to invite you we have vice president sitting here in the audience responsible for all the committees is Sergei Shmarov you can talk to him and he can also bring forward this topic we also there was a proposal on social advertisement get tax is just an example we can uh, use the businesses private businesses uh, we can uh, use them for social advertisement probably and um, we can use these volumes to hope that the businesses to propagate their businesses and the social activities anything can be done uh, out of the private capital so the social advertisement is one of the way second to get tax or similar tax it can also be there where the taxi drivers and taxi companies are licensed we can uh, we can see how the jobs are created because the people are really afraid of getting in the taxi business because 
because they think it's a criminal business, but if the people understand that you can be within this business and earn 120,000 rubles a month, they, we will really get more drivers because we have jobs. And these times of business and the many the private capital can also achieve together with the government common goals. Where you don't need any additional significant efforts. As for the licensing and the participation of the business pros, I can only support. As for the social advertisement, if you can really stipulate a proposal that can be feasible and can be implemented in a legal act, we can discuss it with you. But I personally doubt because any business which is legal is useful for the city and can contribute to the city's economy. And how can we split what you are calling social, what you are calling non-social? That's a big problem and where there is a boundary. Vladimir, a small comment from my side because I'm a, we used to work for the uh, Federal Antitrust Authority because Unfortunately, the private entities cannot be used for the social advertisement. They cannot support this idea from the beginning because it won't be really go through the check of the federal antitrust authority. But I really agree with Alex. Say it is quite difficult to split the businesses into social and non-social businesses because each business works with a particular part of social area and contributes a lot to this or that part of population. So we got two proposals. As for the social advertisement, everything doesn't look really good. And as for the licensing and taking part in the licensing process, you on, can only support it. And now I would like to move to another wing of our round table. I would like to give the floor to Lawrence Wright because he has a view from a side, but he admitted he, he loves Russia as much as he nobody can. Lawrence, what can we do for improve the business climate in Moscow? Well, we can start with the fact that not everything is so bad, but thanks to Alexei Komisarov and his team, we've got already very significant support for the business. However, but I polled my students and start-uppers who are within our academy now, and this is not my personal opinion. This is opinion of many businessmen, especially young businessmen. The first choice that the private sector can resolve problems more efficient. I think that's a matter of fact. But if if we can ask to resolve the traffic jam problems and the weather problems, we can have to look at other problems which are actually more feasible. Because we understand it is quite expensive to be here in the city. If we compare the prices most of Moscow and the Silicon Valley, the start uppers are not really rich. But we also have exemptions. More, we have a lot of services which can help develop to any system and the startup need really these services. And I'm talking about the innovative companies at the moment, the price of development of PR agencies, of web design and so on. We have a set of these services and in Moscow companies providing the services are probably asked for a very high price because they normally work with big companies. However, the real price which will be affordable for the startup is not on the market today. That's one of the problems and the solution for it could be if the Moscow government can be a guarantor. And there are different schemes that can be used here. And the Moscow government can be a customer for these services, can also purchase these services 
it can provide a guarantee for this or, or can carry out negotiations in order to decrease the prices in order to make the services more affordable for the start-uppers. It could be done through the accelerators, incubators, different platforms. So you can, we need probably need the help of many things. As for the developers, we are talking about the IT companies, which are quite expensive for the Russian Moscow start-uppers. We also have a lack of developers. So at the moment, the startups are searching for the regional IT developers, and they also attract these developers to Moscow. It's also a problem how to attract a talent to Moscow. But it's a more political issue. Probably we can need to communicate better with other cities and regions, but have all the roads are leading to Moscow. And the startups should also understand if they want to in implement an innovative project they need to do it in Moscow. And the last thing I would like to propose, it is a kind of popularization of startup culture. And before this session, I was discussing it with Shahar and other colleagues here. Many do not understand, because startup is a quite popular topic now. But it shouldn't be just a popular topic. It should be more popular. We need to really propagate for the startup culture why we're doing it. We're not crazy. Because there is a real sense in doing it. And I hope that the Russian government also understands why we're doing Why we need the venture investors. Why do we need the business angels? Why do we need the co coaches? Because uh, a mayor of Tel Aviv using get tax. This is a culture. This is something what we all have to do, not only the government. This is unfortunately a big disadvantage because everyone wants it for himself. But if we go now to the Silicon Valley, to California, we can see that the even unknown people can give you an advice or context. And this is culture of paying forward is something is a culture of helping because it will help everyone and even you. For example, Moscow is not the Silicon Valley. Moscow is much better than the Silicon Valley, but in terms of culture, there is a quite a big difference. How can we change the culture? I think we have to do it by small steps. The first one is propaganda and popularization. We need to invite the PR experts. We need to set up a PR campaign. We have to inquiries, popularization, and the decrease of IT price for, for the IT services, or decrease for the prices for the uh, services for the startups. As for the social advertisement and the most well, social marketing, because a social market, uh, marketing part advertisement for a particular businessman it will not go through the Federal Antitrust trust Authority. But we also had an example of a tennis left measure. We had Bill Boas everywhere in Moscow, and she showed that it is possible to do a business in Russia. It was a social, uh, good example of social advertisement in the city, popular uh, advertising for business in Mo we can probably really advertise for the business uh, business and entrepreneurship as a whole uh, as for the current legislation of advertising activity we can make popular not only the idea but also the project of the city for example the technopoles or technoparks and we can also advertise for them as the good conditions for doing business or something that can help the start uppers. So, and the shocker can also get prepared for a fourth session, and the best businessmen will propagate for really useful ideas for the city. It's a good idea. Uh, the query from Lawrence, Alexi, what can you say? We have been cooperating with Lawrence for a long time and really appreciate what the job he's doing. But I don't really agree 
we see the idea that the Moscow government should drive down the prices for these or that services. Probably it is not possible. That's why there is only one proposal here which is being implemented now and I hope to implement it in the future. This uh, we can provide this service within the so-called specialized areas within the incubators or accelerators where the city can purchase these services from providers and the residents can use these services within incubators. We support this idea of business incubators. As for attracting talented experts to Moscow, this is a strategic goal to attract smart, good, creative people to our city. And I can say one thing, the main blocker for these people to come to Moscow, this is the accommodation and the price for accommodation. And the idea we have, we can implement it in the, probably next year in a pilot project. We will set up a number of hostels together with our co-working center. We will make a test and we would like to provide a market price for staying at these hostels. We would like to show this model and we do really hope that the business can use this model if it turns to be successful. As for the popularization, I would like to say we did a lot during the last time, but sometimes businessmen uh, really can't complain against me because we have so many events that they are not able to react on them. We, next year we have in March the Global Entrepreneurship Congress. It will be a very significant event in the country. And in this connection, I would like to give the ball to you and give and kick this ball to other colleagues. What could you propose? What we, we need to be focused more? Because we can carry out more events, but there is no need in it. Probably this event should be more focused, so I would like to appreciate any advices from your side. If you allow, I would like to point out the moment Lawrence mentioned. This is a set up of certain ideology or motivation for demand to implementation or deployment. When someone does something, but there is no demand in bus with business for this thing, it can generate a kind of no way out situation for the developers, because we are talking about expensive city and we want the city to drive the prices down so but the city is a, as it is with only set up conditions for people to work here but the city should create a motivation system for deploying new ideas this is something what the city can have an influence on uh, but I think this is not the task of the city and other uh, city structures also task for the companies that he should be interested to implement and deploy what is uh, created within the business incubators. Shahar, you are given the floor. My comment is, thank you, Lawrence, but we don't really hear one of the main ideas Lawrence mentioned, and we we'll also try to support this idea to a certain extent. When we ask why we don't have any significant in growth of entrepreneurship in comparison to the Silicon Valley. And it is a question, oh, who are the future heroes for the country? Because when the Lawrence is talking about the uh, bringing forward the spirit of entrepreneurship, it is not about money. If you uh, uh, say support this company which is doing a real thing, any administration, any infrastructure propagating the entrepreneurship uh, says what is important, what is not important. 
so we're ex expecting to uh, someone to tell us what's important, what's not important, and uh, uh, the uh, characters in movies are changing, uh, going, moving on from Rambo to those with uh, more intellectual minds. So when it's all done at uh, more sophisticated levels of the city of urban development, we should say that there, these are our common goals. But there is a company which does something in the field of transport, or th there's a process which some th someone has started for at their own risk, and they're doing it. And when there's a city behind it, and uh, Mr. Bloomberg, Mr. Johnson, Boris Johnson, and the mayor of Tel Aviv, they've uh, made, uh, they have taken several steps. They sh they didn't have to do that, but this this uh, was a step to uh, designate that they're in favor of certain things. And when official uh, officials uh, say that, that's a big support. It's not just about funding. It motivates people to do something. And Skolkovo is about promotion of certain things. It's not just about the budget. People can do it at, uh, at their own uh, at their own expense uh, and at their own risk. When they have support, it can be private. Let's uh, support such initiatives. And in this case, there are no secrets, and uh, all that uh, uh, joint action takes place. Well, maybe I just uh, said it incorrectly. What I'm saying uh, decrease the prices. I don't mean that. When there are major companies, the prices for s specific f uh, specific services are uh, excessive, are too high, and uh, when the market uh, is not uh, competitive enough, it happens sometimes. Some some bubbles uh, do uh, take place. There are co-workings. There are incubators. These are platforms on which we have accessible available pr prices for every entrepreneur, uh, cheap prices to have a working place and probably some services. And uh, Moscow co-working uh, provide uh, free of charge legal consultations. And there's a small problem with that. You can pay for that, but the prices do not uh, conform with that. When we are talking about more sophisticated developers, uh, PR services, they are not available. In this case, we can add certain services free of charge and or for, for, uh, for a fee. This uh, can be characteristic of any company which purchases the, these services and, uh, and uh, we can make, we can make uh, those services available for startups uh, free of charge. Thank you. I would like to react on uh, Shahar's input. Uh, businessmen should uh, should be celebrated as heroes. I would just like to express my opinion on why Moscow is not a Silicon Valley of its kind. Uh, I think there are two reasons for that. Uh, first of all, it's our attitude in our society to entrepreneurship and the second reason is uh, our attitude to failures to uh, unsuccessful projects all this is a uh, at a very low level i remember times and many of people in the audience remember that too when entrepreneurship was illegal and you could uh, you could uh, go to prison for just uh, uh, doing business and it is quite difficult to change people's opinion, people's stance on businesses, uh, on such a complicated issue as business when they uh, perceived that it was bad and it became good. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, nothing should be done to, to boost that process. As a, an example, we mentioned uh, cinema and next year we'll have the startup movie in uh, Russia's cinemas. It was a film, a movie about entrepreneurs, about businessmen. And f I'm waiting for expecting this movie very eagerly. And I think it's a very good start. 
So wrapping up uh, this topic, as far as a uh, decreasing prices, we will not do that. We will not reduce the prices. But uh, as far as professionals from other regions uh, at attracting other uh, professionals from other regions of, to Moscow, we have will have such a pilot project, and we will make it more popular by m by way of movies, for example. Uh, the startup movie is uh, a wonderful example. I will give the floor to one entrepreneur who grows other entrepreneurs, who uh, is uh, a professor at uh, the Moscow State University, is Mr. Denis Kaminsky. Thank you, Mikhail. One, when we are talking about entrepreneurship, I would like to focus on financing, which is an important component of entrepreneurship. It's something which uh, a city is short of. Uh, I would like to to mention the financial environment, which is uh, underdeveloped uh, to match the needs of the businesses. It's uh, mainly connected with the turnover capital. Uh, the businesses need to maintain their current functioning, and there is an ironic phrase about bankers, because bankers are the people who are ready to give you money when you don't need need it. And uh, we don't talk about brick and waters, about such uh, such uh, physical businesses, but uh, about intellectual consulting services, services which uh, do not have uh, enough physical assets. They have all the uh, collat collaterals are uh, just uh, obligations, like uh, a, an apartment or something. It doesn't stimulate uh, people to do business because uh, the risk to lose an apartment is a big risk. So we should support the financing of uh, the turnover capital. And there are two suggestions. First of all, for major uh, businesses who have uh, grown enough, uh, big enough to strike good contracts with big, uh, big uh, companies, we have uh, a uh, so, 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 such contracts are difficult to uh, implement because people people can't uh, just just attract such so that much money. If the city can uh, come up with the criteria to support these in entrepreneurships or businesses, one of the tools would be the guarantees for such uh, enterprises. Uh, it would be very valuable, and it would bring certain benefit for the for the businesses. A second thesis, which is more complicated to bring about, it, it is a way of financing overdraft. Uh, so you can provide uh, a loan to the company for one or two months for their current operations. It's not a big amount of money. It will hardly stimulate uh, any fraud, but it's important for the current activities of the enterprises when they don't have any sources of money. There are some possible crisis uh, events like uh, the one from 1998 or 2008. The federal government was in charge, uh, was mainly busy with helping major factories, major banks, major holdings. It's understandable, but small businesses have to be taken care of as well. They are even at a poorer uh, situation. Bec it's even more important for the city because the city lives by its uh, small enterprises. And it's, there's a simple way to motivate people to uh, open their businesses. Uh, there's a mechanism which is quite simple. If uh, the crisis uh, comes up, then uh, there should be a uh, Offset in Texas, and it's not an urban, hist not an urban story because uh, the the amount of taxes from small businesses is not so high. But uh, uh, si the city should ask the federal government to to give th that offset to the businesses after after the crisis is over. There are three suggestions which I have. Thank you. When the crisis comes, it should be announced. Of course, there are definitions of recession of the crisis, so three quarters should be unsuccessful or any other definition. 
first of all, we set off the payments, then we finance the overdraft, and uh, then tax relief during the crisis. I would like to start with the third uh, the third one, I would like to listen to our tax expert, which is uh, who is Sergey Nikitin, Kirill Nikitin from the Moscow State University, an expert in taxes. Do you think this suggestion and for uh, tax relief is uh, helpful for the enterprises? Well, I think. Does it work? Well, I think this suggestion for tax relief is always perceived as a very smart one for by everyone except for p for p those who depend on public financing like pensioners like uh, like the employees of public uh, enterprises and uh, uh, there are certain mechanisms in the law which have not been implemented so far we often discuss the tax burden for startups, for small businesses. So I would like to say that uh, these suggestions for startups are critical. As far as I know, a small business in our country and startups fall within this category. It's difficult to say that they're paying taxes. At all, at all, we have many uh, different uh, beneficial taxation regimes, ta taxation modes, which uh, which is used by taxi drivers, by other small uh, uh, small enterprises. It's like one hundred dollars per month, and that's it. That's all what you pay. What you're paying. Uh, our small business, except for the small business which um, is uh, in, is included in the VAT uh, schemes is not uh, checked, is not verified, and that's very beneficial for the business. And uh, recently, a paying taxes research by the World Bank has been published, and another breakthrough was performed. We are were at uh, place 100, and now we are uh, much higher, much better off. And this boost was due to one important factor. We reduced the tax burden on the uh, on the uh, salaries fund fund. Of course, every permanent load on business creates problems for the small business. For at especially at early stages of business startups, but there is a question: If we want to reduce the load on the business, do we want to proportionally reduce the load, reduce the pensions of uh, the employees of small businesses? Do we want to reduce the um, maternal leave payment and so on and so forth when we are ready for that for such uh, challenges uh, in, in in the United States people do not uh, pay the payroll tax and people who work at such uh, such places they are devoid of uh, certain uh, guarantees and privileges which are connected with this type of tax and benefits should should be put apart from uh, from the taxpayers. Uh, so s some people should be paid from the money which are uh, w should be p paid pensions from the money which are uh, paid in taxes by other people. It's not it's not very easy. So we should stimulate small businesses is a good measure, but the stimulating effect can be very small. May I just comment on that? If we talk about the pensions guarantees under our current reform, it's very strange to talk about this. I would like to talk about your stance, because we talked about what's proper and what's improper. Uh, no, w 
so no no small businesses do do pay taxes if you pay taxes so we don't care so we we don't uh, pay attention to you it's a very wrong signal i think about uh, taxation is it true that small businesses do not pay taxes do not pay vice versa the structure is quite uh, clear transparent and tech for taxi drivers it's quite transparent and quite easy everything's been simplified by but the tax load is quite big so uh, taxi drivers have paid uh, uh, 3000 rubles it's 100 dollars per month and now the uh, tax load is higher so taxi drivers return to uh, to companies instead of being private entrepreneurs and uh, we are transforming our legal systems which motivate simple taxation systems as they should be we have plunged in a very sp into a very specific topic and i would like to suran and alexei to give their verdict verdict on uh, the financing financing of overdraft on uh, tax reliefs during crisis uh, crisis uh, t t tax offsets well we've talked enough about the taxes I would like to add that in Moscow slightly less than 10 percent come from small and middle businesses it's not a, a very small proportion it's, I will support Dennis's opinion that the business does pay taxes in fact they do pay taxes, in fact. Uh, at least those uh, law-abiding uh, entrepreneurs, they do pay taxes. There are very beneficial tax taxation modes, and Price Waterhouse Coopers has uh, made a research on uh, has done a research on uh, taxation in major cities. And Moscow um, uh, was one of what was on place eight among several dozens of cities. In uh, London, the level of taxation is uh, many times higher, not just several percent, but several times higher. And I always welcome every benefits and every type of support for business when they're leveled and balanced by other uh, measures. As for the money, one of the, one of the tasks that I have is to make uh, to 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 go oh to move on from direct financing um, by the city to financing by uh, enterprises by subsidies by overdrafts by grants and whatnot because everyone who gets that support they uh, uh, they report that this that this helps them it but it doesn't change the whole uh, landscape of the city and those who do not get that support are in uh, a competitive uh, environment so we are moving towards that and we'll uh, we'll keep many types of support support as compensations for exhibition costs or will reimburse the patent uh, licensing pr procedures fees this is this is how we change the conditions for real business as for all the other types of support, we're moving towards that, and uh, we would like to use the indirect types of support. We have two uh, a two active me mechanisms, one of which has been active for many years, and the second one is has been implemented this year. You can get a bank loan without having a collateral. Now, the second mechanism is uh, the microfinance support of second level the idea is that you get um, you get uh, favorable loans to uh, to the enterprises up to 1 million rubles at uh, at the rate of uh, 13 to 19% without complicated procedures without red tape it's very simple and very uh, uh, very easy to, to use so there are certain industries uh, uh, where this uh, interest rates applies this mechanism is much weaker than it used to be 
uh, and uh, the number of loans is much uh, um, uh, much uh, less than we expected. It's probably the matter of start, matter of launch, and next year we'll probably see uh, better results. I would like to make a small comment. I completely share the position of Alex and Kirill because we need to go away from uh, direct finance tools for supporting the small businesses. We need to support the industries or the types of business that are really prioritized for us. But if we we take the 10 percent of the tax income in the city budget. This is approximately 80 to 90 billion rubles a year. But if you add also some other payments we get for the leasing of land, and if we get we postpone the 10 percent of the in tax income, that we won't will get a significant hole in our budget so we'll be able to finance the educational facilities, the healthcare facilities. Even in Moscow, it's quite difficult to attract this money, uh, even from the banks as a loan, despite of the high credit ranking of Moscow. So in this case, it is better for business to plan its activity more correct. So as for the crisis, they don't really come unexpected. We do have some crisis events that normally happen even long before the crisis. So you need to get prepared for the crisis and optimize your activity. As for the finance support, financial support, the city does have them. But how efficient the eye, that's a question. In the current situation in the city when the small business can get a really compensated and reimbursed rate of lease rate. Uh, these people normally say that it is good, but the even majority of small business don't really get any reimbursement. So probably, in my opinion, is the right IP methods that are being implemented, the support for the systematic projects like Technopolis or Technoparks, they can get in preferences in terms of land lease and so on. The right mechanism is when the whole small business can get a tax preferences for the property. And since the next year we have a new taxation system when you have to pay for your property against the cadaster value, it will start with a minimum number of properties in the city. But in this case, we will get 300 square meters, which will be free of this tax. And this will be a real support for small enterprises. Uh, this is some methods that can really deal with some of the groups. And I hope that we will keep developing and modifying our policy in this direction. As for the individual preferences, we need to uh, pretty stop this practice. So I would like to make a conclusion for this discussion so uh, money won't be available but there is a com ready compensation for the uh, trade fair participation cost for the patent work and there is a, a guarantee fund and there is a microfinancing fund so Ren, what would like to say first of all I would like to support Vladimir and Alexei with the talking about business and there are some business risks here, and everybody can also calculate this risk, how the tax topic is really something with this very slip. We can add here something and lose something in another part. But Russia joined WTO, so we not able to subsidize directly anymore, and we will face a conflict of interest, and we will be uh, also complain that we are doing something in the wrong way. I also would like to say that the city can support the business, the small business, in a way that this it can also uh, take more intensive in the so-called public order, because the real small business, real small production facilities will get this public order. This is a more 
a better support and we shouldn't actually expect the city to give money to someone to overcome a com obstacles. If you allow it me, I don't really want to support businessmen individually. I really want the businessman to have an infrastructure and I absolutely agree with Alexei and Vladimir it should be an infrastructural solution, but in this case we don't have any two opinions. The colleagues taking into account the peculiarity of this topic, I would like to come to the end of our discussion. I would like to uh, talk about the opinion from a side. And Alexei wanted to see how the entrepreneurship is looking from a side. I'd like to give the floor to Mike Emmerich, which is a link with the development of the entrepreneurship in Manchester. Do you have any opinion on the current entrepreneurship pro problems in Russia and what best practice you may propose as to us? It's been a huge uh, privilege um, being a fly on the wall of your um, discussion. And uh, I think there are some very important lessons, I think. Um, so I, before I went to, back to Manchester, I actually spent several years of my life advising the British government in the, in the Her Majesty's Treasury and in, the, in Downing Street. And these debates were familiar then and they're familiar now. I think these are, these are the debates we all face. Um, somebody said on the platform this morning something along the lines of successful businesses don't make a, a successful city. Successful cities make for successful business. And I think that's a hard truth that we've learned over 40, it's 40 years since the first OPEC oil shock um, uh, led to the end of, uh, led to the, the beginning of, of the destruction of British industry. During, we haven't had the political changes you have had, but we have had profound economic changes. And in that 40 years, what we have learned is that, is that it's the place that drives business. It's business, stable taxes, the rule of law, uh, good public transportation, and those factors matter more than any of the innovative business support we ever do. I think that's the first point I want to make. That said, small business matters far more than any of us ever thought 40 years ago. Because once you've lost a lot of your traditional industries and your large businesses, you don't grow them again quickly. You can't. And I think, I think therefore, there's a paradox, which is that it's the general conditions of the economy which create growth, but in the end, small businesses are the most important. So three, three quick points. I have to say I do rather agree with Lawrence that in the end, if you get your basic conditions right, you want to see prices for services fall. And small businesses should be playing a role in that. If you've got, if you've got a, 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 um, an oligopolistic market in which large corporations um, all have a, a large market share, they will bid up prices. And if your entrepreneurs are successful, they will bid prices down. It's not the job of the city to do that. Perhaps it is the job of the city to create the conditions where that can happen. Um, none of us should try and be like Silicon Valley. I go around the world doing conferences, and you can go to London, Cambridge, UK, uh, you can go to Denver, you can go to, uh, you can go to Texas, you can go to Paris, Sophia Antipolis. We're all trying to be like Silicon Valley, and we can't. It's unique. It's an outlier. We've got our own journeys to make, and if we've got dense mar labor markets, dense capital markets, effective corporate governance, good financing, we will take our own journey, but it won't be that of Silicon Valley. I think there are some very specific business support, secondly, things that, that, that I think would add to the mix. I'm a great fan of the American um, Small Business Research Initiative, the SBRI. I think the earmarking of, of funding to go into innovative firms can be a real stimulus, and I think that's something we're investigating, and I haven't heard much about that. And similarly, I think we're investigating, and I think there's something here too, maybe for you, how the privatization of formerly state functions can be earmarked for small businesses as a way of stimulating small business uh, service providers in the care sector, in the health sector, in sanitation, etc. But mindful of the, the, of the topic of this conference, uh, my, my last thought for you is about the periphery of the, uh, of the city. Um, because most business in the end concentrates in the central business areas where it's attractive. And I was really struck looking around the exhibition um, with my colleague this morning uh, at the, uh, the Thomson Reuters uh, urban data project and what it was showing me about movements within Moscow. And they, the project leader said to me, she was surprised at the data, which is mapping um, a telephony use uh, through the city, that three quarters of the population of the city don't go into the centre three quarters of the population of your city stay in the peripheries. 
And I, I just want to leave you with a vision, which is the vision we're trying to create in our cities, which is of our suburban towns and, and uh, commuter points, trying to make those beautiful, sustainable places, vibrant places, with uh, strong business cultures. And if, we, if you can do that, you've got three quarters of the population who I guess will have unserved business needs that should be the subject of some spe specific uh, policies for enterprise. I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Alex, about the concentration of the business in the center. Here in, in Moscow, we do know this situation not because of this project of Thomson Reuters, but we also know from other studies that our city is so called monocentric when everything is concentrated in the central part. However, the idea of this forum is I don't want to go deep into the discussion, but I can say only one proposal. As for us, we are planning to develop industrial zones and make them in a attractive for new business opportunities and what I already mentioned but I want to start a discussion we need to create more conditions and opportunities for leasing different rooms and lands oriented for particular services or businesses at the city periphery and if you allow me I would like to ask Mike one small question, taking into account his experience. How do you assess the efficiency of any support measures for the business? How do you measure these support measures for the business? Um, we, uh, what we have started to do um, as a city is, is to use economics more. Um, so what uh, you, you very often don't know um, um, ex ante before the event whether or not a, a, a proposal is going to work but what you can do is is do evaluation as you do things and and if something looks as if it's not working stop it and put and put the money in, into other projects um, so in relation to enterprise support I think that's the best you can do but as you as you are designating those new those new uh, zones for industry uh, I think you can do very because uh, you know, we we have traditionally allocated our en enterprise zones according to political priorities rather than economic priorities. And guess what? Most of them haven't worked because they have been in the wrong places. They've not been near the population. They've not been near the people with the right skills. They've not been near the transportation. So I think what you can do is, is to use, ent is to use uh, ex, ex ante evaluation uh, to, to, to using you know fairly standard now economic techniques to assess which are the right areas and to invest in those and if that's politically difficult to then redistribute the, the proceeds from that around a wider area. Okay, dear colleagues, we will uh, draw conclusion of our meeting. We had an interesting format with businessmen from one side and Vladimir and Alexei Suren on the other side. And, and I would like to insist that we really manage to discuss as for the so free of shop trade, we have a proposed to collect opinion from the business and send it to the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Moscow. Uh, as for the social person who get taxi won't be shown on billboards. However, it is also in a way f to help the businessmen, and it is possible. If we are talking about the IT development, the no IT, free IT services will be in Moscow in the near time, but there will be a yeah, task project for the hostels. It will also uh, will allow to you direct the experts from the Russian regions as for the uh, tax issues and compensation. That's an interesting topic because business means money. At 3 o'clock in the Hall E, we will have a session together with Vladimir Yefimov and 
Mark Emmerich and Kirill Nikitin, who is responsible for the taxes and PwC and the Lomonosov University in Moscow. So we are waiting for you in Hall E, but but there are no no solutions for the compensations, but there is a guarantee, guarantee fund and a microfinancing fund too. We already heard what the concerns of the business, and you got some proposals, some got some answers. It was quite a practical discussion, and from my side, and giving the final floor to Alexei. If you have a question, just please wait for a second. Probably you can ask a question individually afterwards, and I will give the floor to Alexei. I have just carried out a poll for 1,000 students in my university, and they uh, said I proposed to some of the businessmen. Uh, number, number uh, Putin is ranked first among, among businessmen, then Medvedev, and Vladimir Solodio, the moderator from Channel 2, ranked 3, and Pavel Durov from VK.com was ranked fourth because the media importance is something what we need to take into account. You know, now we will have a startup movie on our screens and kinetators in the in the near future. And I also would like to thank Shaha, who also came once to my lectures, was able to say what a real entrepreneurship. You know, also Alexei to draw a conclusion for this round table today. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who re take, took part today in our roundtable discussion. It was quite interesting, probably not so acute, but I think we have more problems in this area than what we managed to discuss today. But I would like to address to the people who are doing business or are connected somehow to the business or represent any associations or can support business. Please keep this dialogue and please give us proposals because we get a lot of proposals, proposals, but they normally say please give us money. If you do have any so-called smart up proposals, we will accept them with pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear colleagues.